Welcome to Fat Boys Outdoors, brought to you by Whisker Sticks LED Lights. They are pretty much limited by the user's imagination. Find them on Facebook. Hey guys, Paul Ragsdale here with Tim Fat Boys, and I got uh, Brad Dyer with me. I guess that's how you pronounce it. That's right. Okay. And uh, we're going to talk about a, a little bit of uh, his background, what he what he's done, and where he is, and why he is where he is. So, um, you were telling me here a little bit prior before recording that uh, you was a forestry agent for forestry. Yeah, I did. Uh, I went to uh, University of Georgia, graduated with a forestry degree, and then I spent uh, several years working. Uh, for the corporate side uh, uh, over in uh, Savannah and then moved to uh, Prattville, Alabama. And uh, then actually uh, did a brief stint with uh, Caterpillar up in Peoria and then uh, ended up back down south uh, in the timber business again. And then in uh, 2008, uh, kind of right before the recession hit though, I, I switched and, and went into more uh, utility vegetation management and uh, moved back over to Georgia and now uh, work uh, keeping transmission lines cleared and, and doing the clearing for, uh, you know, utility work. Yeah, you uh, was telling me you like to catch fish. Is there, what what have you fished for in, in the past and what's your favorite fish now? Well, you know, I, I, even as a kid, I said, I, uh, I remember I went to fishing camp down on Lake Seminole, Jack Wingate's Lunker Lodge. And uh, you know, just always had that passion as a as a child. Loved to fish and went down and did that. And you know, I was probably more uh, like everyone else. I, early on, I, I I was a bass fisherman and enjoyed chasing those. And then as I uh, got older, uh, you know, I used to hunt uh, quite a bit too. And you know, probably about six years ago, I just decided I I like catching big fish and. Uh, I like uh, fishing with live bait, so I pretty much exclusively uh, went after chasing catfish and then kind of found out through doing that, that uh, especially in the springtime when the stripers runs on, you know, I've enjoyed catching some stripers too and gotten into that. But that's pretty much all I do now is uh, I'm a year round cat fisherman and, uh, you know, certain times of year, I'll, certain times of the year, I'll go after uh, some stripers. Uh, they're a lot of fun in the river. Uh, but it's just, uh, that's how I, that's my stress relief. That's how I relax. Uh, just, uh, love to get out on the water. I'm the kind of, I'll leave in the dark and come home in the dark. I'll fish all day. I just, uh, it, it, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a peaceful way. I don't, you know, I don't tournament fish. I do it for fun and, uh, just a good way I found to relax. Yeah. And that's, that's the, the way, um, my first show that I did was was uh, going strictly towards the the channel cap, not the channel cat fishing, but the tournament fishing, and that's something that uh, I didn't do a lot of, so I had, didn't really have a passion in it, and um, I let some other people take over with it, and then uh, when I came back, I said I was gonna uh, go <laughs> go for the family and hang on a minute. Mr. Cat, I bet he won't come in this room again. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I got to go back here a little bit. So, I wanted to go more in just the common man catfishing. So, uh, that was the direction that I, I went, and that's the direction that I am at. But, uh, Brad, what is your what what is the catfish that you fish for, and what is your personal best if you keep track of that? Yeah, well, I'm um I primarily I, I live uh, in Georgia, I'm um, in a town called Short Sharpsburg, so I'm southwest of Atlanta, and uh, you know my my closest place to uh, fish is is uh, West Point Lake and. I primarily fish the Chattahoochee River that uh, feeds into West Point. Um, down there, you know, I look at it. Our, uh, I, you know, 
I'll, I'll fish for all three species. I mean, I'll, I'll fish for blues, flatheads, channels. Uh, yeah, we just kind of really had everyone down there and not. Yeah. yeah, it just depends on the time of year uh, that it is. So, I mean, I, I, I you know, I, in fact, I went to uh, fish the uh, Tennessee River outside of Chattanooga here uh, about a month ago uh, in May. It's it's about two and a half hours for me one way, but like down on West Point, our lake record flathead is 37 pounds, 14 ounces. And our lake record blue, I believe, is 29 pounds, 6 ounces. So, you know, not huge fish, but, uh, you know, I look at it, I've gotten to the point where I can consistently, my biggest flathead on rod and reels, 37 pounds, 4 ounces. And uh, my biggest blue uh, that I pulled out is 31 pounds, two ounces. So, uh, you know, I broke 30 on, on a blue twice down there. But, uh, you know, I can c consistently catch fish that are in the, you know, the upper range of what that lake has to offer. But, uh, you know, I kind of realized if I'm going to get into some bigger fish, I'm going to have to travel a little farther. So that's what I think my plans are in this coming year is uh, I'm going to be heading up to uh, Chattanooga Spend a little time on the Tennessee, on uh, Nickajack and, and Chickamauga. But, uh, you know, my biggest thing is time. You know, it's it's about 40 minutes for me to run down to where I put in on the Chattahoochee. And, uh, you know, I've got uh, three kids and a family uh, uh, here. And just, uh, you know, that's why I say probably the, the toughest thing is finding time to fish. I try to make it, try to go once a week. Uh, doesn't always work out. But, uh that's why I say that's why I run to West Point and Chattahoochee so much because it's closest. But, uh, uh, you know, and that's the other part is, you know, I fish that river and lake enough where, you know, depending on what weather is and different time of year, I, I pretty much got that lake patterned down and kind of ready to move on to to another look challenge, you know, trying out the, the Tennessee. So uh, where I fish at on the Chattahoochee, it's, uh, you know, I primarily anchor fish. Uh, we just have a ton of ton of timber in that I mean in that river bottom on those ledges and uh, it makes drifting real hard to do. Uh, I, I, I've tried it, had a little bit of success at it, but I, I, I spend more time uh, being hung and, and that's what uh, you know. So that's where I, I'll do some different things while I'm anchoring. I mean sometimes I do some live line and mostly I'm Carolina rigged, but uh, uh, again we've got a, a lot of lot of a lot of timber. Uh, in the river, but same time we got a lot of fish too. So it's a uh, it's something that uh, you know normally when I go out, uh, uh, you know again that's why I spend all day fishing because it's it, it offers a good good variety of fish, and you know we we've, we've got some cat fishermen down there that I see you know time and time again. But it is again it's it's something that uh, not 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 the volume of people chasing cats down there again gives us a good population. Uh, you know, I'm primarily a CPR fisherman, and, uh, you know, that's why I say when I go, when I want some catfish to eat, I'll go chase some channel cats. Uh, but, uh, again, it's, a, it's, it's been a, a good lake to me, but uh, that's the thing. I, I'm, I'm going to start doing different this next year is doing a little venture out to some new waters. Yeah, it's something that, uh, uh, as far as CPR goes, these people, most of them. Hang on. Hey, I'm in the middle of an interview. I'm going to just call you back. Okay. Bye. That's her nickname, Queen Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she chose it, not me. But, uh, see, let me go back here a little bit. And, uh, these, these CPR guys, some of them, they just don't have a sense of humor. I didn't know what CPR was at the time. And Lyle Stokes took me under his wing and and uh, talked about conservation and all that. But one day I, uh, uh, they were talking about CPR and catfish. And I was uh, catch photo and refrigerate. And they come unglued, man. No sense of humor whatsoever. But uh, Eddie didn't make that mistake again. Some of these guys are hardcore and and uh, on the hardcore CPR. And now I don't keep, you know, I don't hardly keep anything to eat unless it's farm raised. But 
just too high mercury levels here around the St. Louis area. But um, when I was talking to you a while ago, you said something uh, that you mainly use uh, live bait. Can you explain to me why you use the, the live bait and you prefer it over the other? Yeah, I just, uh, in my time fishing, um, you know, I pretty much, as far as my success rate, uh, you know, I'm on a lake where we've got threadfin chad and gizzard chad. There's no skipjack uh, in that section of the river on West Point. Uh, but, uh, and then I'll also, uh, you know, I'll take, uh, you know, some wax worms with me and, you know, catch some brim if I'm flathead fishing. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's another part of it is, you know, figuring out when you hit the water every morning, you know, that's the first thing you got to do is, is fill the bait tank up. Uh, so, I mean, it's just as important. I, I've sat there and tried to tell folks, uh, you got to learn how to pattern shad and with the different water conditions. And, uh, you know, I've just, to me, it, it's hands down. Fresh bait is so much better than frozen. Do, uh, and it's hard to freeze with the uh, or thread bin. Sorry, go ahead. No, I just, you know, I, I haven't had, I don't like the, uh, to me, when you freeze a, a gizzard chad, he's, they're just, they come out mushy and just don't stay on the hook as, as, as well. And, you know, that's something I'll usually, with my setup, I'm usually fishing eight rods and uh, I'll start off the day four with live bait on them and four with cut bait and uh, see what the fish like that time of year. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of the ones I have probably caught more flatheads on cut bait than I have live bait. You know, you hear a lot of folks, oh, you got to have live bait for a flathead. I, I you know, yeah, they, I, I've, I've caught plenty of them on live brim or live gizzard chat, but I've probably caught more on cut bait than I have live. Do you guys uh, have any problems with the, uh, the Asian carp there? No, we don't have any Asian carp in the you river. Want some? We can yeah. give you a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I don't know. I've I've uh, I've seen some videos. I I'm not too much into the fish flying in the boat as you're riding down the river. Yeah, Missouri, so. Mississippi's the worst right now. It's and I heard that they're almost up into the uh, the Great Lakes, and that's a that's a waste of habitat if they get in there. But yeah, that uh. I was kind of wondering if you had problems with Asian carp and stuff over there. A lot of us, if, if we get our hands on them, the law is that we have to kill them on on contact. And if you get caught with a live one in your boat, you're getting a ticket. Hmm. And that's the way they do it. And a lot a lot of people are using them for cut bait, and they work just as good, just not as oily. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was going to drop back real quick. You know, when you were when you were talking about CPR, uh, you know, I, again, you know, when I want to eat fish, I'm going to keep smaller fish under five pounds to eat. But, uh, you know, it was probably four years ago that, uh, right around Christmas time, my son was home from college and he wanted to take some catfish back to have a big fish fry with his buddy. And so it was, uh, I think it was three days before Christmas I was out there and, I probably had about 80 pounds in the cooler and we pulled back up to the dock and there was a young boy, uh, you know, probably I'd say 10, 11 years old on the dock with his father or grandfather and they were sitting there fishing and, uh, you know, he asked me, he said, you know, do you have any luck today? And I, I told him it was a decent day and he sat there and he shook his head and he said, well, we're fishing for Christmas dinner and all we got is one brim. Grandma's not going to be very happy with us. And so, you know, I, I told them, I saw they had several five gallon buckets. I said, go grab those buckets. I said, grandma's in luck. And uh, I loaded them up with a bunch of catfish as much as those buckets would hold. And, uh, you know, that grandfather, he just gave me a nod and said, thank you. And, you know, I remember walking back to the truck. I said, that boy was so excited and he was, you know, how, sitting there hollering at his grandpa that, uh, you know, it was going to be a great Christmas. And so yeah, that's probably this time of year I try yeah. to do it. And no, I he, did it here last He went back did it last year. He caught yeah. what he did. Yeah. Well, I mean, last, in fact, last week, I mean, I was fishing uh, again. It was Friday. Last Friday I was fishing. There was two guys on the bank and they were 
older gentlemen and they they were there when i pulled up to that hole and where the fish were they were far enough off they couldn't reach them and I, you know i caught a triple uh right there and you know the guys were watching well, i heard i could hear the get one guy comment you know we've been here all morning ain't caught a fish or whatever and i hollered over to him i said hey you guys want some fish and uh you know i took them those those three fish and you know they were as grateful as can be so that's that's probably the time this time of year and that's what i, I put a post out there on one of the catfish forums i said hey guys you know if you boat fishing and you have success this time of year, you know, a lot of the folks on the bank ain't quite as lucky, you know, so that's what I try to do around Christmas and New Year's is make sure I keep some fish. So I've never had it where I pull back into the dock and I got somebody on the bank that ain't looking, you know, hadn't, hadn't quite had the luck they're looking for. So that's just, you know, I say it's my Christmas tradition. I try to try to keep some fish and keep some folks you know, I'm out there fishing for fun. Some folks are out there fishing for food and just keeping that in mind. So that's kind of one of the things I like to do around this time of year. Yeah, I think it's funny. You know, as well as I do, they got home and they say, hey, look what I caught. <laughs> well, I've had it. It's cracked me up because I've seen that same young boy back at the ramp several times. And as I'm pulling in, he yells, hey, here comes the catfish man. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um I, I had another question on my mind and i can't think of it for nothing and that's the part of being able to edit things out um oh yeah 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 hang on here I'll, I'll cue it up okay so what kind of poles do you use what kind of reels do you use is there anything particular over the other you know, I, I'd probably come back and say, I, uh, I've got a, uh, a, a Duke's mix. I'd probably say I like the, uh, ripping lips, uh, seven foot six medium heavy, the best. Uh, I've got some, uh, meat hunter, uh, customs that, uh, that I like. Um, and then I, I you know, I, I also like the, uh, Eagle claw cat claw. Uh, again, when I'm down in a in a region where, you know, most of my fish are going to be 30 pounds or less, uh, you know, that's probably the one thing I, I, I've gone back to is, you know, I'd rather have a a, a better fight uh, than be fishing with such a tank of a rig that, uh, you know, I, I'll, you know, you can reel them straight in with not too, you know, no finesse to it at all. So, uh, you know, but I'm I'm a circle hook fisherman. You know, I prefer, I mainly use uh, seven aughts. Uh, circle hook's probably my favorite. Because uh, I look at it a bunch. Most of the shad I catch are, you know, six to seven inch range. Uh, and I always catch some bigger gizzard shad that I'll cut. But, uh, you know, I'll use 65 pound braid with a 50 pound uh, mono leader, anywhere from eight, you know, 18 to 36 inches. And, you know, what most of big baits. Now what? What about big baits? You use big baits? Like yeah, I use a double rig. So it, you know, it more depends the time of the year. Because uh, you know, like even here recently, I've had to uh, downsize the bait, and I've probably found you know uh, a, a four to six inch hole shad is is way out producing the cut bait bite on on it right now. So. Uh, Again, I think it kind of depends on the time of year. Now, in the springtime, I'll go back with bigger baits. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when I'm getting into some of these gizzard shad that are 10, 12 inches, you know, I'll use a double hook rig on those. Hey, Matt. Uh, I'll use a uh, double hook rig on uh, on some of those. But, uh, uh, again, primarily it'll be a, a, a single hook, seven out circle hook on a Carolina rig. Okay. All right. We're getting ready to close out. Um, if you had any advice to give a rookie, what would be the first and, and foremost advice you'd give him? Yeah, you know, I'd probably sit there and say, uh, you know, just about everybody today at least has a smartphone. Uh, and if you, uh, even, you know, if you have, don't have a fish finder that has a, a, a GPS on it. 
you know, you can download that Mavonix app on your phone. Yeah, I got it. But, uh, you know, knowing, knowing the, the, the depth of the water and your contour where you're fishing, I think is super important because, again, it, you know, once you figure out that pattern where those fish are holding, being able to find that same topographic pattern in another section, I think, you know, just saves a lot of time helps uh you know finding those fish that much quicker so you know i started out with a you know more of a john boat style and you know now i've got a center console and i've got things rigged up the way i want it but you know you don't have to run out there and you know spend a fortune to get into this sport you know it's something uh i think uh you know again you know that's why i look at some of these when i talk about these bank fishermen if they knew knew the depth they were throwing into sometimes or, or if they realized, hey, if they just went a quarter mile down the bank, they were in a much deeper section. You know, that's what I, I'd sit there and say is, that, you know, knowing, knowing your water depth and your topography is going to help you a bunch. For someone starting out, that's probably the most critical thing. And then they'll start learning those patterns on what time of year, what type of flow you got, where those fish are holding. Gosh. I guess I'm going to have to let my dogs out. All right. Well, stay there with me for a little bit, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the, the broadcast here. And uh, Hang on. Knock it off. All right, well, I'm going to cut the broadcast. Stay with me here a couple of seconds, and we'll uh, have a chit-chat.